let's continue now talking about the effects of stress and isotropy in a wellbore. As you remember, we have said that rocks are quite anisotropic, and that applies to the elastic properties as well to, uh, to the strength properties. In, if we were, for example, to draw and to run experiments of unconfined uncom compressive strength in rocks that have a load and lamination at different angles, we will see that uh, the strength of the rock is going to vary with the uh, orientation of the lamination. Uh, usually, the one that is going to be the lowest is going to be the orientation with an angle that it's around the friction angle coefficient divided by 2 plus 45 degrees, so about 60. And in this case, let's assume that this is the lowest value. And the orientations for 0 degrees and 90 are going to be larger than that because the load is not oriented at this particular orientation that coincides with that particular uh, uh, friction shear failure. And whether uh, 0 or 90 degrees is bigger, that depends on the type of rock. Let us assume in this case that they are the same. So uh, this is going to make the example a little bit easier. And that uh, in the other case would be 30 degrees that the strength is a little bit lower than the other two cases. And the result is that depending on the orientation of the loading with respect to the lamination, you might find a weaker or a stronger rock. And this is going to be very applicable for wellbore stability. Because in wellbore stability, we may have often a deviated wellbore that as it goes through anisotropic formations, the direction of the loads and the stresses is at an angle with respect to the lamination. And we also have cases in which uh, the, the rock may also be tilting. And that tilt of the bedding of the rock is also going to affect uh, wellbore stability. I have a nice example here to show for, from uh, some colleagues of mine that did experiments of wellbore failure in the laboratory with anisotropic rock. And in this paper, what they did was to, among other things, to fail rocks with an, a circular cavity inside that represents a wellbore with bed with the orientation of bedding at different directions. In this case, for example, these three cases on the top, the load is applied in vertical direction and the bedding is perpendicular to the load. In the middle row, the, um, the bedding is parallel to the load. And in the third row, the bedding is at 45 degrees uh, with, the, with the loading. Let's uh, look at, uh, at this example here on the top. As you may expect, your breakouts appear uh, mostly on the sides because the direction of the loading here is uh, vertical. Uh, here you have another uh, example, and this is more or less what you may expect. For the parallel ones, breakouts start and then they align with the, the interfaces of the rock and one of the nicest examples that we see over here is that for 45 degrees, your breakouts appear to start where you would expect them to, to appear on the sides because the load is, uh, in this case, vertical. But they start growing asymmetrically with respect to the load. And it's influenced by the orientation of bedding. So let's see what is the effect of this strength and isotropy on creating uh, such wellbores. Let me uh, close this. I have a minor software issue on opening the game. Okay, 
uh, we're going to apply now this strength and isotropy in order to explain this type of uh, wellbore breakout. And what we have is uh, this uh, condition in which we have our vertical loading and the breakouts. All right, so from here what it happens is that when failure starts, shear failure start, starts here, where you would expect it to happen. But then it just grows on particularly this direction and that direction. And the rock in the other two, it doesn't fail. Let's see why. I hope that you notice that in this case, the shear failure is going to be caused by the hoop stress, which is too large and causes shear. If you notice in this case, the loading in this side of the breakout is such that the hoop stress is at an angle which is not convenient with the lamination. This case would correspond, for example, to what we have shown before as 30 degrees, in which the load is at an angle uh, so that it, it is not the optimal, or it, it doesn't give you the lowest strength. The lowest strength is going to be aligned for more or less 60 degrees. And now if we go, this is sigma theta theta. If we go to this configuration, to this side of the breakout, you will see that now the lamination It's at the angle that helps shear fa failure or that makes shear failure easier. And that's why these are the weak regions. This is the region in which the angle of, um, of the load, it aligns with the angle of the shear failure, expected shear failure, and that's why these are the regions in which you have more uh, shear failure. It's not because the stresses are, are different. Stresses are more or less the same here and there. It's just because the rock is weaker at this particular orientation of the bedding. And that's why you have the breakouts, particularly in these two regions. Okay. Um, as you see, uh, strength and isotropy can be quite important. It's important for wellbore stability, and uh, it is important also, we're going to see later on, for uh, hydraulic fracturing. And we're going to jump into uh, the last topic of uh, wellbore stability issues, and it's something that uh, I didn't have the time, uh, the time of the recording of the video to include into into my notes, but this will go uh, right here after strength and isotropy. And that's the issue of a low fracture gradient due to uh, issues related with, uh, mostly with depletion. And what happens in these cases is that your, let me write it over here, on the right, it happens that sometimes we have an anomalous or an anomalously low uh, fracture gradient. Anomalously low fracture gradient. I hesitated in writing anomalously. First time I think I write that word. Okay, and this happens because our breakdown pressure is too low. Why would that breakdown pressure be too low? If you remember the equation from breakdown pressure, it depends on the state of the stress, but it also depends on the minimum principal stress. 
and that minimum principal stress is the the stress which is the lowest stress at which I might have a hydraulic fracture and the minimum principal stress in a formation is also related to the pore pressure right because this is going to be sigma 3 plus pore pressure if you lower your depletion if you lower your pore pressure caused by depletion extraction of hydrocarbons or fluids into a formation lowering the pore pressure is going to result in a decrease of the minimum principal stress the effect is not one to one it's something that we're going to see later on but in summary lowering your pore pressure is going to decrease your minimum principal stress and in turn that's also going to decrease what is your breakdown pressure and what is your fracture gradient it happens in many places around the world that you might have some very nice and productive reservoirs like for example this one in this figure like let's imagine these sands on this figure were an excellent reservoir some time ago but because of depletion now the pore pressure is significantly low and therefore the minimum principal stress is significantly low and because the minimum principal stress is significantly low the fracture gradient might also be low and if in this case for example we are trying to go through this depleted sand because we're going to go deeper into the source rock that originally filled those sands into a shale for example and you have to go through those depleted sands that's going to be a major issue because your fracture gradient is not going to increase with depth but it's actually going to decrease with depth in this example what you see is the pore pressure in gradient uh, units you see that it's more or less constant what is the gradient of pore pressure at some point it increases in uh, close to shale formations but then it decreases in this region where the reservoir is and that's in this case because it was caused by depletion as a result the fracture gradient of the sand in dotted line and also the fracture gradient in, in the shale to a lower extent are both affected and um, because of that the mud window varies quite a bit as you get to that depleted region and as you get to that depleted region you, you can see that uh, you have to lower what is your mud weight instead of increasing it as we were seeing in previous examples if you were to continue drilling in this case with this uh, mud weight when you hit this depleted sand you will get into low circulation because your mud pressure is way over the fracture gradient limit so this is something that is very important to consider and this is something that especially for the people working in unconventionals might be an issue because many times as we try to go into deep shales uh, we have to go into shallower formations that may also be uh, hydrocarbon producing intervals but that have been seriously depleted and that's going to be uh, a serious issue in determining what is the upper bound of the mud window all right so with this we finish the discussion on wellbore stability